Hello and welcome to the Book by Book, a podcast about the odd book or two we've read. I'm your host Scott and I'm not alone. Toby's here too. This episode we're talking about Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier. It's a fairly spoiler-free episode, but just remember the inevitability in talking about books in this way. There may be some spoilers, but I think you're good on this one. So if that's okay with you, continue on and I'll see you on the other side. Yes. Well, I'm glad you feel. Yes, I love that. To be fair, perfectly. I think it's brilliant because I always wonder where we're going to come in. Like we're <laughs> mid conversation in something. I'm like, oh, what are they been talking about? Yeah. <laughs> when I'm, <laughs> when I listen back to our own podcasts, <laughs> yeah. and I've forgotten like what we were talking about prior to the actual bulk of like the, like the last one when you do you do your introduction to the the Salem's Lot one. You're like eventually <laughs> we'll get <laughs> yeah. to that was a long one a long intro it was how are you doing how's piano yeah doing? i'm good piano it's uh it's sitting behind me <laughs> ominously over my shoulder like a looming beast of oh. play me uh, i haven't honestly played it with any anger or love i guess would be a better nicer way of putting it uh, in a while but that's not to say that I haven't been playing it. I have been playing it, just not with any purpose or direction. More of a tinkering. Mm, more of a, as I walk past. <laughs> I feel like our, our episodes are fairly random when we record, sometimes, you know, a couple of weeks, sometimes yep. a couple of years. Uh, I should always ask you mm-hmm. where your piano's going, and then in a few years we can just clip it all together. And it's the diary of yeah. Toby's, Toby's piano. Piano journey. Piano path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one day, one day, we'll have another, like, uh, what was it, outlude um, of me playing piano and I would have gotten better. Yeah, that was the first up. one we did. Mm. Yeah. I have been learning a bit of, well, I've been listening to jazz and watching a load of YouTube videos on how to play jazz on piano and then oh. sitting at the piano and going, or bang, to that effect. Let me find an irregular beat that sounds pleasing somehow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but apparently, we're going to have thunder snow tonight. Thunder snow? Yeah. Is that like noisy snow? <laughs> that was exactly my reaction. I was like, what the hell is thunder snow? <laughs> but apparently, it's just snow with thunderstorms involved. Oh. But yeah, apparently, that's going to happen here tonight. Well, the snow is it's nice. Cool. But if it stays mm. snow, if it's slush by the time you wake up and Eesh. frozen to ice, it's yeah, not hurdle. so great. You've, you've got snow where you are, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had snow for a while. Um, yeah. Classic. It must be so weird to live in a place where, yeah, 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 we've got snow. It's, it's just like, yeah, that's just outside. It's part of... Yeah. Whereas here, it's like, oh, it's snow day! Yeah, yes, let's go! Rare, huh? oh, it's, it's going, it's melting, everybody. Damn it, that was it. Mm. Snow day is like always a season fun. for you. Mm. <laughs> I've been waiting for one of us to say something that I could segue into this book, but I into don't think book. it's going to okay. happen. I'm okay. going to force it. So uh, what kind of pizza do you like, Toby? <laughs> what kind of pizza do I like? Um, I'm, I, my favourite one is a Tesco's one, um, which has mozzarella and tomato and uh, ricotta cheese, soft cheese. Some kind of oh, is that like a four cheese or something? Yeah, well, it's got ham, ricotta. Oh, okay. And all that sort of thing. There's some spinach and it's very nice. Let me ask a more funky well, question that would suit better. What's the craziest pizza you've had? Craziest like toppings pizza. wise. Oh God. I you could barely call it a pizza, but it's one of those ones with like strawberry jam and well, like a savory sweets one. and oh, savory. Oh no, I have no idea. Just just standard meat feast. I haven't really been very exotic with my pizza topping. Wait, but you um, had a meat adventures. pizza with sweets on top of it? Oh no, no, it's, just, it's like a, a it's like a cake pizza basically. Oh, okay, pizza. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got super confused there. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, that's <laughs> meat feast with dolly mixtures and strawberry jam. No, not quite that bad. Mm. But yeah, so why, why, why did you ask, Scott? Toby, I have been reading Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice cover. cover. Isn't that, like that is a, a, that's a great cover. That is, 
Yes, that is a cracking cover. It's a mix between like, I, I don't know, like sort of traditional ta- pop art tattooing and like a pop art mm-hmm. sticker. Mm-hmm. Very bold colours. I don't know. And Google, a pavement Google pizza. Google Pizza Girl by Sheen Kyung mm-hmm. and you'll see the cover. It's, it's super cool. Um, it is a very cool cover. I was trying to prepare for this and I was listening to some interviews of her actually and she said she... She was talking to a publisher and they said, what, what covers do you like? Send us some. Mm-hmm. And we'll sort of try and come up with something with the illustrator, what have you. And she couldn't really think of any, but she sent them a T-shirt. Oh, and nice. I don't know if it's a pizza place she worked at, but with a pizza company. And then a week later, the, the publisher was like, yeah, me and the illustrator have been, we haven't got that out of our minds. We're going to go with, we're going to take that as our inspiration. Yeah. Nice. So she, the, the, this author mm-hmm. worked in a pizza company. She did. This is her debut book, so it and it was written in some time. It's very much write what you know again, isn't it? Where's that page? It's 2020. Definitely a recurring theme. 2020. She wrote uh-huh. this in 2020. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Wow. So this would be a wish. Will be one of those lockdown. She would have been in lockdown more than likely unless she started writing it before and it got published in 2020. But yeah, I think you know. I think we have to keep in mind when when the book's published that there's a good chance it was finished a year or two years before. Um, mm, she said it took mm. her like around three years from, from conception. Right, okay. And by that, she said she literally started with like the first line. She said she's like a line writer. She would just come up with a line of dialogue or I don't know, the whole, I don't think he's the mm-hmm. first to do it, but J.R. Tolkien always says he was just marking some exam papers and he just had the inspiration and he wrote in a hole in the ground, there lived the Hobbit. He didn't know what a Hobbit was. Uh. He didn't know what the hole was. He just had that inspiration for that line. And, um, nice. Don't get swayed. Pizza Girl has nothing in common with J.R. Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a first-generation Korean-American. And by mm-hmm. that, she's born and raised in the States, but her parents are emigrated. Yeah. And it's, I want to say it's a coming-of-age novel, but the more I look into it, it's, it's almost like the anti-coming-of-age story. Oh, God, kind of a bit. those aren't my words if i'm honest some someone else was talking about i was listening to a bunch of interviews of her this morning so okay she's 18 she's in a very quiet suburb of la mm-hmm. she's pregnant mm-hmm. and she just works a shift at a pizza place and it's actually a really uneventful book okay um, but not in a bad way. No, not at all. I, I mean, it's a short book. Mm. We are talking mm-hmm. under 200 pages. Okay. Let me just run through the, the plot as it were, yeah, without spoilers. So she's, mm-hmm. she's pregnant. She's 18. Bit of a twist is that her boyfriend, roughly the same age, is super happy and excited. And her mum is also super happy and excited for her. Right, okay. Like, I don't know if there's this sense of the mum. The mum just feels, that was my life. This is going to be your life. This is this is what we do. So she's pretty pretty dissatisfied with life and a certain sense of feeling trapped. And she gets a call from uh, a woman called Jenny, and she basically says, "Can you, can I get a pickle covered pizza?" And she's like, "Ah, uh, what are you talking about? I've just moved to this area with my husband, and I've got a young young teen son. Um, maybe young, maybe not quite teen. Maybe so maybe twelve. 10. Okay. And he's basically pretty upset and on a hunger strike. And the only thing he will eat is a pickle covered pizza. But since we've moved, no one will do it. Can I just give you a tip? Go out, grab some pickles, shove them on the pizza. She's like, yep, yep, why not? And so she delivers <laughs> this pizza and she basically just becomes super enamored with Jenny. She just fixates on her. She just. Uh, okay. And not at this stage, there's just something about Jenny. She's just sort of quite a frantic lady, but quite an honest lady. And I guess quite refreshing for for someone Mm. in our protagonist's world. And our protagonist is literally just Pizza Girl. She doesn't have a name. It's a it's a POV book. It's a a first person. And so the book just sort of uh, slowly unfolds, uh, mostly. Uh, this girl is just working at a pizza joint and it gets to more and more. She's just waiting for this one call so she can go and hang out with her. She sort of 
every time she drops off a pizza, she's there for like another 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Right, yeah. Tries to sort of insert herself in her life a bit. And for most of the time, the book just quietly goes about this way. A lot of inner thoughts from this young girl. Um, I guess the, the interesting thing, it's with, with everyone else being happy about this baby for her, there's this, this sort of sadness that with, with or without this baby, she's trapped in this town. Like she would be doing this without the pregnancy. She's got no mm-hmm. real ambition. She's sort of that teen lost in life. Yeah. Um, do I feel so like I'm you... reading an 18 year old? If I'm honest, no. I feel like I'm reading a 25 year old who's mm. taken what she felt when she was 18 and put it back, if that makes sense. Because I, I mean, I think yeah. you all had that. How were you when you were like, I mean, I guess we went to college and uni and we sort of had a mm-hmm. path we wanted to do. But despite yep. that, it's that that thing of not being able to put feelings in words articulately, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the, the intense emotions you get as a teen, um, I guess part puberty. I, I don't know. She's 18. Yep. And I guess her hormones are throwing up on her. And I yeah, guess it's definitely. a coming about coming out novel or she, I'm not quite sure if it implies she's always been by. Or, right or she's actually gay doesn't mm-hmm. i feel like it doesn't quite go into it but i think i don't know i guess she's bi she just likes who she likes mm-hmm. uh, but is it, is it made explicit that, that, that she finds this woman attractive then yes she, she right okay she does she's sort of dreaming yeah. about her in ways that would imply or not even imply yeah. that they kind of do say it it's weird. How old, how, how old is Jenny? Uh, mid, I don't know. I don't think it quite says. Maybe 45. Right, okay. I think she's, she's, when they say middle-aged, it doesn't mean 50, does it? No, which, which she's got a son who's 12, 14. She's probably mid-30s, possibly. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't think she's 50. I think I jumped at it. I think she's just middle-aged um, mm. housewife. So maybe right, 40, okay. late, late mm-hmm. 30s, 40s. Yeah. Um, and she is kind of a mess, but I don't know. So Pizza Girl, what's kind of cool is that she's not that likable. She's that almost typical teen, self-centered, mm. but it doesn't mm. do it in a frustrating, oh, teens are the worst. It, so it just has a nice, I don't know, she's like a pleasure to read and she makes bad decisions. I, I'm just trying to think of something where, every decision someone makes is the wrong decision and you're watching it. Yeah. Like you're rooting for them. You, you really want them to not do that, but it's yeah. just so compelling why they choose to do what they do. Mm-hmm. And you can't take you can almost see the reasoning behind the decisions they make. Yeah. Yet you know, they're the wrong decisions. It's kind of car crash TV. Yeah. 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 Completely. And for the most part, it stays pretty, pretty down to earth. I will say, out of not out of nowhere, but there's a sort of ending climax mm-hmm. situation environment that not feels forced, but I don't know. I can see, I can see some feedback saying it's it's fine that it's uneventful, but how are we ending this? We need to we need to end with a climax, mm. and I it I just find it hard to believe that she wrote this with the climax in mind. It's not unpleasant. It's not dissatisfying. It just sort of. I don't know, com- considering how quiet the book is, it kind of comes comes from... Is it jarring? I guess so. Not comes from nowhere. It's just, ah, you've, you've, you've had this quiet sense about your writing for three quarters of the book, and I would have liked to see you mm. make that work for an ending rather right. than inject, you know, a climax ending. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay, interesting. Yeah, kind of. It, it you know it's got some humor it's got some mm-hmm. it's got some pretty tragic moments there's so her father's not around and he was just a very cold guy and he knew it and she knew it, and everyone knew it and he said he, he once said to her every man should just go and live on an island alone and she sort of <laughs> dropped that and i think a part of her she kind of has that sway 
like her dad's loneliness and want for isolation and to be away from society mm -hmm. and void of, of so much, she mm -hmm. has that pull. And she doesn't really, it's like she's trying to come to terms with, and should she, should she fight it? She's about to become a mother yeah. and she, okay, she doesn't have everything she wants, but she has all this support. Like mm -hmm. everyone around her is kind of supporting her and she has this pull which she because she knows the effects of it because of her father it's kind of come to terms with i can't spend my life wanting to be alone and be in this family because that's what yeah. my dad was and i know how that messed me up and this is not an autobiographical book that the writer no. is uh american korean but i think she said she's put anecdotes from her life in here yeah definitely he did work in a pizza I thought, place I, I think she said yeah. her father did once say that to him to her mm -hmm. i don't know like i said it i really enjoyed this a short read you did okay mm -hmm. it had to happen sooner on this ep on this podcast toby yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, so how why, why did you pick it up because it's not something I've, sh I've never heard of it it's a debut novel how did you hear about it the cover screamed out to me i'm not gonna lie the cover just screamed mm -hmm. out to me uh, I just picked it up and the book was just intriguing enough. I've missed it, but it seems like this was massively hailed. L listening to some of the uh, interviews this morning on YouTube, some of the, mm -hmm. the, the hosts interviewing her were saying this book was pretty hyped in like big magazines. Esquire, M Marie Claire, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Marie the Claire. Local National Radio, uh, Vogue, like before mm -hmm. it even came out, there was a hype. Um, wow how, i wonder how you go about achieving that without for, as a debut novelist um i i don't know i, I guess you just it, the book needs Impressive. to be good i guess it needs to be fresh and uh, more importantly yeah. i think the your publishers need to see a bit of a hole in the market or um mm. an audience that this is going to just slam with yeah, I don't know yeah, true. Word slam there, and it's confusing because slam <laughs> that means hate, like uh, uh, just something <laughs> that's going to resonate with people. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good word. Resonate. And I guess she she talks about in the interviews, like what what she thinks it means to be millennial and the Gen X and the Gen Y, and for her being mm -hmm. an American, she feels for her generation, no one bought the American dream, whereas one generation right. before, everyone did believe it. Like yeah. I've been reading a lot about. No, this. Jay did. Especially like post post pandemic and COVID, a lot of there's like a massive, um, I guess, dropout career change where people are just fed up, fed up with their job and they're quitting, despite yeah. not being in a financial place to do so. Yeah, a, a lot of it kind of seems to come down to, well, the one one sort of I forget who it was guy trying to sort of figure this out and come up with an explanation was that. It's just a really unhappy time if you're just going to work your ass off and you're not going to get that, you know, house with a white picket fence, mm -hmm. um, 2.4 children and basically that American dream. Mm -hmm. Then why am I bothered? I'll mm -hmm. be just as unhappy, but with more free time. Yeah. Not working. Which is not necessary. But that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's the one thing I found from being locked in for such a for so long and you know massive periods of time was that i did the free time became a, a problem for me mm. i suppose uh, yeah the singledom side of it doesn't doesn't help but even with all of that it was still there's too much of it and i i missed being given purpose as it were i couldn't give myself job? purpose Yes, I do enjoy. I do enjoy my job, mm. uh, in 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 the sense that when it's when I've got things to do and I'm helping people, I enjoy it immensely. But there are massive periods where I'm staring at a computer screen waiting for something to happen, mm. um, and I don't enjoy those periods because they're boring. And I'm, I'm and, and in those periods, I'm like, well, I could just be sat at home doing this rather than sat here doing it and waiting for something to. Do. But when I'm up and in a TV studio or I'm helping students or I'm filming or I'm acting or, or all of those sorts of things, then it's, yeah, definitely the, re well, it's the reason I pursued it as a career, because it's great. Mm. But I guess if it was, if it was a, 
office job or a pizza delivery person and that's the sole purpose yeah i could i can imagine wanting to just jack it all in and mm. go and hide on an island somewhere i guess with, with, with a massive chunk of the globe like what are you working for as a goal mm. like when it mm-hmm. comes to money right mm. something else i wanted to ask you i guess this is this is great here's a quote from the book Soon you'll have your own beautiful boy or girl who will look at you with their perfect little face and you'll feel love and hope. And mostly you'll feel the weight of everything that's ever happened to you and everything that will ever happen to them. And you'll want to run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, that, yeah. That, yeah. To see what does that, what does that say mean to you? I mean, it's pretty self. I mean, I, so I don't have a kid at this stage, but I yeah, am. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going with this. Ev- everyone, not everyone I know, but a lot of my friends are, I think you probably have the eldest, but I, I guess that's something you know, this book is trying to deal with is, I don't know, like when I think about how old I am and where my parents were, mm-hmm. they had like four kids. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine having four kids right now. And I guess mm. it's that, that ad, age old adage, adage mm-hmm. that word, I can't pronounce it, I think right now. Um, when will I ever be ready? And I think you can contest first Never hand. can be ready. You're never ready. <laughs> you know, if you, you're always ready and you're never ready. That's what it is. You can wait till you've got all the perfect amount of money and the white picket fence to put the four, 3.2 children in, 3.1 children, whatever it is. But you're always ready. You can, you can make it happen and make it work wherever you are in life, pretty much. But it's like going back to that saying, it is, it's, it's just, that's a, a, that sums up my feelings of having a kid is that it is in equal measures the most wonderful thing in the world and the single most terrifying upsetting depressing saddening emotional roller coaster that you'll ever probably go on they do stare at you with their perfect little faces and the the cutest little smiles and all those sorts of things and they make you laugh and and everything and then you remember depending on the person you are if you're if you've got like if you've been bruised by life, if you've had things that soured your life, then that stays with you. All the, the, the scars that you've picked up along the way come back to, and are, you, you not so much project, but you worry about projection or you worry about them going through similar things and you want to protect them mm. above all else. But you also know that you can't because life's a it can be an absolute bitch and no matter what you do and no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be able to protect them from every single bump and bruise along the way. Mm. Um, and that's quite hard to, to come to terms with and accept as, as, as that line denotes, yeah. I think. The agony and ecstasy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <That's>... no, I, <laughs> Lana, is, yeah. Lana, if you're listening, the most amazing thing... A beep <laughs> the yeah, yeah, previous yeah. word I just used but yeah, yeah. um no, no she's amazing and I, I wouldn't change it for the world but I would change the world right oh, if I could there. is that a Toby original that is I just made that up on a spot yeah. mm. you, you read the sort of I don't uh, I guess I don't want to call this I would say this is a coming of age novel but I, mm-hmm. I, I guess I that anti-coming of age I'm not I guess what does coming well, it's, of age it's, mean? it's not it's not an anti, I wouldn't say it's an anti coming of age but it's a it's a coming of age novel with a I guess it's nothing the new, of it right no. like how when did Juno come out that seems like a very great mm, commercialization yeah, prime example of mm-hmm. a young great adult show. who is basically good at articulating with some humorous yeah. sarcasm but yeah. a general feeling of quite sadness and fear and yeah jaded 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 at a young age and accepting mm-hmm. that you're lost in life right but i guess pizza mm-hmm. girl does and these coming of age things are often really good at just putting into words feelings that even though yeah. as adults we don't feel now that we have once felt mm-hmm. um i don't really know what coming of age means now that i think about it basically the cusp of becoming making your first big decisions and it's a loss of innocence life is your own i think realizing that you are in control of your own path and your own 
destiny and the decisions you make affect that path others um, and rather you. than the innocentness of just like nothing matters everything's okay you know nothing's going to harm me i can do whatever i want i can go left i can go right i can go forward i can turn around and go back if i want none of it will make any difference oh, actually no it does oh no yeah that's probably what coming of age is in a nutshell mm. um realizing that life is a grind I guess it often comes at this age because you, as a whole we don't have a choice in school and it's I guess coming of age is often a, f a year or two after school because it's you've had, mm -hmm. you've had a few years of making your own decision and mm -hmm. it, there's a good chance you know you've either gone to college and continued your education or you've sort of you know like this small time small time jobs to kind mm. of keep busy and take the time to figure out what you want to do with life Mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely i read a book um i wouldn't say it was a i guess it was a coming of age a little bit of coming of age novel it is about growing up and understanding that things will happen to you and people are horrible and how you deal with them is a, up to you and that was uh i won't go into too much detail about it it's a Caitlin Moran's how to build a well, how to build a girl. Oh, okay. It's good. Yeah, pretty sure it's how to build a girl or how to build a woman. Mm. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but she's it's basically an eighteen-year-old publisher, wannabe publisher, moves to London, and it's about her life in the the writing circuit, the people that she meets, and the people she sleeps with, the people she's in love with, and how long her life just unfolds during that period of her life it's, it's very very funny it's a great book not like unlike anything i've ever read previously but i i tend to i i used to love doing that just read a, a book from every genre um mm. you're probably quite diverse with your reading probably more diverse than i am but listeners wouldn't know um it, but we have read non <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah no it was it was hilarious I highly recommend it to everyone to give one of her books a go because she's a very witty writer, satirical a little bit, I think. There's a, some satirical, satirical side to her. But it just the way that she, like, I remember laughing out loud on the train. There's not many books that have done that that I've read where I actually chuckle while reading them. Usually I'm just engrossed in a fantastical, horrible, horrifical nature. But this was definitely, it was just so funny moments and her perspective on sex and exploring her sexuality and all of those sorts of things. She's very, um, is it liberal? Is that the word? Sleep with women and sleep with men if she wants to. She's not averse to doing whatever she wants. She doesn't adhere to a social norm. And yeah, it's, it's a really nice insight and very, very, very funny. So I highly recommend uh, there's only one there's only one book i've read by her so far but i'm going to go and find the you rest of the details continuing on mm -hmm, definitely we, we do not do enough comedy books on this on this show you, you work at a college you must have a library at the college right yeah there is one yeah i've been thinking we should do some classics mm. we should do dracula we should do 1984 and Fahrenheit mm -hmm. and uh hitchhiker's guide maybe a few terry pratchett's mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know but yeah, I that kind would of feel be a like shout. I want to branch out a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, Pizza Girl then. Yeah. You recommend it. Whatever she writes next, I'll, I'll check out, you know, when someone gets mm -hmm. a free run. It kind of, I'm getting, for some reason, now stop me if I'm wrong, but I'm getting vibes of. You know, we listened to that audio book, audio play of a, again, I think it was a, a Korean or Japanese novelist of the the robot in the oh, shop window. Uh, about Clara and the Sun by... Clara and the Sun. It kind of has vibes of that, but maybe I'm totally wrong. But for some reason, those two seem like they would sit well together as reading companions. Uh, mm, no. No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> okay. Odd one, that one. This is about okay. a pregnant. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess in on some level, I guess you could say that she's 
very alienated, mm -hmm. even if, even albeit by her by herself. Mm -hmm. um, what I remember of Clara and the Sun, it's it's sort of like um, what's the super toys uh, AI, like a, mm -hmm. a young robot girl in a slightly future yeah. like trying to go out into the world under her adopted family as a robot and just sort of grow as a person. Yeah, fit in. Say there's that level. Yeah. Yeah, it's again, it's coming of age novel, isn't it? I guess that's what it is. But as uh, artificial intelligence versus a sullen teenager. Nice. Okay, Have you well. Read Pizza Girl? Uh, let us know what you thought. Have you read any mm. Catley Moran? Also, let us know what you thought. Yeah, Which yeah, one... yeah, that would be interesting. Or if you um, have any books that you think we'd like, or you'd like to hear us talk about, or re review, or spoil, <laughs> cast. Those, those then... are Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. Those are more yeah. Stephen yeah. King. <laughs> I don't know what you think about our listeners are, but <laughs> <laughs> whenever you, whenever you, met, you do one of our listeners, you always say hello. Yeah. Scott doesn't think you're a yokel, but if you are a yokel, that's fine as well. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's let us know what you think, um, or what we should read, because it'd be great to have a external direction uh, let us on know this. What I we think. Hey, let mm. us we... know. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah. dumbass! Like the theme of the book is like, you know, loneliness. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Some people say. Hey, I'm going to wrap it up around there. I want to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Join us again next episode. And until then, support your local bookstores and have a great day.